All right, what's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Huge show today. This is our year in review 2016. What we're going to do in this show is we're going to break down our top three favorite comedies and our top three favorite dramas of the year. It's not new comedies, not new dramas. It's just the show that we thought performed the best. It's the three of us right now. It's Sinead DeFries. David Griffin, do the same wave. There you go. And unfortunately, Sasha Pearl Raver could not make it today. Uh, we're a bummer, but we're going to read off her list, so she will be represented for all you people that you don't want to hear the beautiful tellings of a Sasha Pearl Raver. Okay, let's get into it. We are going to start with the one, the only, David Anthony Sebastian Griffin Esquire, attorney at law. Now, what? I forgot to ask you, Mr. Makuga. Yes. Are we doing this in order? One, two, three, or am I just reading off? Uh, uh, I would go three to one. Three to one. Yes. Okay. So in third place. In third place. And we will start with comedies. Oh. Or are we starting with dramas, Adam? Comedies. Comedies. We're, comedies. Starting with We're going comedies. with comedies. Okay. So David, you're going. Your top three comedies yeah. in third place is Master of None. Oh. Aziz Ansari's uh, excellent new show on Netflix. Fortunately, we're going to get a second season of this. I. I, I really enjoyed it. Nominated for Emmys. Nominated for Emmys. Yeah. I mean, Aziz is a great creator. He also wrote a book called Modern Romance, which mm -hmm. is uh, kind of scary to read because it just shows you how complicated and crazy dating is in the 21st century. Um, but I'm glad the show was made. Yeah, I, it's, it was definitely one of those shows that wasn't a laugh-out-loud comedy. Mm -hmm. But it definitely had its laugh out loud moments. Uh, the the episode when Anoush is lactating is one of my favorite <laughs> memories of TV this year. I thought Master None was absolutely fantastic. I, I, oh, sorry. One no. more scene. I just want to mention. I love in the first episode after he has he says having sex with his girlfriend, yeah. and they go to the uh, you know to get like a day after pill or whatever. Like they don't really say what they need, and yeah. the farmers is just like. Puts yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah. <I was> like, <laughs> yeah. The look on the face. <laughs> so and good. his parents, one of the beautiful things Aziz Ansari did was he cast his actual parents. Love his, his parents, dad. And his dad is just dad is sweetheart, so good. sweetheart. Do you watch Master None, Nate? I do not. Another one to put on the I list. No, I am just adding to my enormous list of DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, David Griffin, in two. In two. We're going with South Park. Oh, that yeah. South Park was so fantastic this season did a great job with the member berries maybe one of the greatest <laughs> animated <laughs> inventions ever like member member <laughs> Shanae, it's always a little you ever see south park uh yeah i watched this season oh he did yeah. you like member berries yeah those were so good um i love the story of the trolling of course trolling's a big thing and of course donald trump uh versus you know hillary clinton that was also good too i had so many good moments this season amazing that a show like south park 20 seasons yeah. still not only relevant Absolutely hysterical, inventing things. Uh, you know, I, I, this show could never get old to me. Yeah, and they're yeah. starting to do this whole thing where they have like these big, big arcs. Yeah. Within the last couple seasons, instead of just these standalone episodes, it's been great. Fun. It's fun. Mm -hmm. All right, and your champion comedy of the year, David Griffin. David Griffin's number one comedy is Atlanta. Well said. One sir. of the well said. just one of the best new shows of the year. Period. Uh, in any category, this was just so well done. It's, you know, story about Paperboy uh, and Earn. You know, trying to make it in the trap rap business in Atlanta, Georgia. Just excellent. Yeah. Sinead, you loved Atlanta, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think we all loved Atlanta. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely in my list. I loved TV this talk show. Favorite. TV yeah. talk favorite. Yeah. V big fan of the show. If any of the cast members ever want to come on TV talk and talk we about Atlanta, have you. we will mm -hmm. we'll do a seven-hour episode, and we'll talk about it. It won't be that long, but maybe. it's it could Because we could mm -hmm. talk about it for that long. When I went, to, I went to Atlanta this year for the first time since the 1996 Olympics, and all I wanted to do was go around to places that I had seen yeah. in the show. That's what this show, mm -hmm. it, it made it Atlanta, the character, and I think that's a lot why they, uh, you know, titled it Atlanta. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. smart show. And Donald Glover getting nominated for all kinds of stuff. The show getting nominated for Golden Globes, Critics' Choice Award. Won a Critics' Choice Award. Won a Critics' yeah. Choice. Mm -hmm. So Happy beautifully done. Congratulations, Donald Glover and crew. Okay, David Griffin, your top three drums. Oh, we get to go right straight through. This is exciting. Yes. Um, so my first or number three in my dramas, hard decision to make. This Lots of great shows. Yeah. There are other shows on here that are excellent that I couldn't include. I had to narrow it down to three. My number three pick is The Crown. Uh, one Claire, of my favorite yeah. binges of the year, for sure. Uh, so good. Uh, Claire Foy just killing it as Queen Elizabeth. You know, also, too, uh, John Lithgow as... Um, uh, well, I can't think of his name. Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill, of course, one of the most iconic who historical just, figures And who just ever. won a Critics' Choice Award just for his performance. Exactly. Yeah. Another award there. Uh, beautiful Netflix's most expensive series they've ever done. You can see where the money went. Mm -hmm. The sets, the costumes, everything is just spot on. The, the music, Hans Zimmer does uh, some of the intro introduction music. Uh, it, it's worth checking out, The Crown, if you haven't checked it out yet. I thought it was going to be a little slow for my liking. I didn't think you'd stick with it. No, I loved it. I wasn't it. sure. What did you think of The Crown? Um, I only watched the first two episodes, okay. and I, I loved it. It's just 
just mm-hmm. a show that I felt like I needed to pay a lot of attention to. Mm-hmm. And my attention span these days are very limited. But <laughs> I did. I was very surprised because I usually don't like slow television. And even though it is slower, it is so beautifully shot mm. and incredibly active. Crown, can I tell you a word, a word that I learned or a phrase I learned yeah, real quick? I? So I know we always use the fr- I, I use it all the time, the word slow. Yeah. And I know slow sometimes seemed like a negative word. Right. Uh, I heard uh, it was um, uh, Leonard Malton said uh, deliberately paced. Wow. Ooh, that's, that's why they paced. Deliberately guy. paced. That's the why he's one of the biggest critics. Yeah. yeah, deliberately paced. Yeah. Deliberate, we're, uh, Leonard Wheel, we're going to be using that term here on the TV talk. <laughs> it's ours now. <laughs> there we go. David, in two. Another show that is deliberately paced. Yes. Sundance TV's it's channel 557 on direct TV, if you have. You probably don't even know it's just like, I think it's some premium channel. It's not. It is called Rectify. And it is so good. It has been, this season has been heartbreaking. Josh, oh. we, Josh and I text after we watched the episode. I know Josh is crying. Oh. I'm getting emotional. Josh it's, cries it's rough. For everything. I do cry. Yeah, but this, this, this is a show that, that pulls me. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's so, it's so brutally just, Beautiful, mm-hmm. if I can say that, uh, to two Bs back to back there. It's just, it's gorgeous to watch. It's hopeful. It's not like melodramatic, no. like soap opera dramatic. There's a hope there, but the heartbreak too. It's just, it's life. Yeah. You know, it's real life with this uh, Daniel Holden, what he's gone through in his life after being uh, released from, from death row and coming back and trying to live in a small town that maybe doesn't want him back. I Things he, you know, it, it's so good. It's, it's one of the most uh, well acted shows you'll ever see. Yeah. Aiden Young deserves, he deserves nominations. He's never gotten one yeah. for anything, yeah. like any major award really in television. The cast, the chemistry on that cast, Abigail Spencer, the real life people that they found. A lot of these people you've never even seen act in things before. Right. And the entire cast absolutely knocks it out of the park. It's such great deliberately paced television. And, and real quick, you, you probably see like, you know, Abigail Spencer's on that show Timeless on NBC right now. So Timeless is kind of big. And, uh, Clayton Crawford? Mm-hmm. Clayton Crawford is on Lethal Weapons. Yep. like, oh, those guys. Like, yeah, they got those roles because of Rectify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very emotional show. All right, and I think we all know what your champion drama is. Pull Dark! No. <laughs> Pull Dark, Downton Abbey. No, but I am going across the pond. <laughs> We're course. going to Scotland, though. Yeah. And my number one pick is uh, Ronald D. Moore's uh, based off Diana Galbadon's uh, author, the the Outlander series, which is in it finished its second season uh, this year. Season three is coming. Um, uh, Catriona Belfe is up for a Golden Globe right now. Uh, she was up last year. I hope she actually gets the award because it is just one of the the best shows on television. It's beautifully shot. If you heard that name, Ronald D. Moore, the creator of the show, you recognize that name. It's because he did Battlestar Galactica, the, the reimagining of Battlestar Galactica back in 2004. So Outlanders is one of my favorite shows. Every year, God, it just delivers. You know, you, you I honestly. Has so much it is a deliberately getting, paced show at times. I, I need to give the pilot in this show one more chance. I just couldn't get through it, and I think this is my year mm-hmm. to finally get into the Outlander and really, really dedicate my because I know that you love it so much, yeah. and I trust your opinion on TV so much. I feel like I need to watch. And it. season one's a little bit longer. It's sixteen episodes. They broke it up into season one A and one B. Season two's only thirteen episodes. Okay. Yeah. Real quick, um, her name is pronounced Katrina. Is it Katrina? It is. I thought it's it was Catrione. No, or it's, Catrione. The, well, only Italian, reason I, the only reason I... I know this, she's Irish, but... Yes, yeah. so the only reason I know this is because Katrina? my name my name is extremely Gaelic, so wow. even though it's spelled S-I-N-E-A-D, it's pronounced Sinead, yeah. because all oh. the letters have different pronunciations. Like Interesting. So an I-O sound together makes an E sound, so it's just Katrina. Oh. Katrina. Oh, no, it doesn't it's sound like as exotic, right? Yeah. I'm going like, to call her Catriona. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds very pretty when it Even comes. Even though she's Irish. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Catriona. Catriona. <laughs> okay, who is next? That's David. Great lists. Thank you. Yeah, Thank very you. good Fantastic. lists. Yeah. 2016, great year in television. Okay, who do we have next? Is it me? Oh, it's me. Here we go. All right, <laughs> start out with my comedies. Number three, I'm going Atlanta. We talked uh, already about it. This show, when we were... Looking at teasers and we were getting in trailers and, and everything, I didn't, I, was, I wasn't questioning the show. I just didn't know how much I was going to like it. And this not only was probably the second best pilot of the year, this mm-hmm. show had me hooked in the first 10 minutes. The chemistry, the realness, the overall deliberately paced aspect of the show, the, n- the not punch you in the face comedy of it, but the right. laugh out loud moments that you got, the show just really killed it for me. Atlanta, so, so mm-hmm. good. Uh, in two... For me, my second in comedies, I'm going Sinead and I's favorite, New Girl. Yes. This show doesn't get 
worse. Like, yeah. it just keeps getting better. Brings a, It literally brings a smile to my face when I go to my DVR yep. and I have one lined up. And I can also rewatch it at any point. Yep. The hum- I don't know if it's just my kind of humor or what it is, because yeah. not everybody totally loves the show as much as I do. It's, yeah. it's never something I can understand. I agreed. Uh, this, this show has super funny moments. The comedy never seems forced. Uh, the storylines are so absurd, but they, yet they make sort of make yeah. sense. And uh, I saw, this is one of those stupid Josh stories, but I saw uh, uh, Zoe Deschanel in Hermosa Beach or walking through and I didn't recognize her. And so my fiance, uh, she said, that's uh, Zoe Deschanel. I was like, no, it's not. So then I, I went and I, she was shopping at some store and I was like, oh, I'll just go shop in the store. And then I casually accidentally bumped into her. I was like, oh man, I love New Girl so much. She's like, oh, thank you so much. You're so sweet. I was like, no problem. Then I just left the shop. <laughs> Didn't buy anything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was so awkward. I'm such an idiot. Uh, but uh, yes, that's hilarious. New Girl. If you guys want to catch up, it's such easy television to watch. Oh, it's the catch up on it. It's on Hulu. You will absolutely love it. And my final, my victory, my captain, my captain, uh, my number one comedy of the year is by far Veep. I think it is the smartest show on TV. It uh, the comedy is just nonstop. Kissing your sister, the ep- the penultimate episode of this season on Veep, may be one of the top ten funniest episodes of television mm. in the last three or four years. Years. They the writing is just always so sharp and Julia Louis Dreyfus. They say she just keeps winning the awards. Great, mm-hmm. she deserves them. Mm-hmm. She's she's just that good. Uh, I should throw in a couple honorable mentions there for me on the comedy. Uh, Modern Family. Uh, uh, that's it. That's my oh and Modern Family. Sorry, and Last Man on Earth were two of my my honorable mentions in the comedy. So there we go. My top three. Let's go to dramas. My third pick in in dramas is everybody's favorite Game of Thrones. I, I was thought, very surprised by this that this was your number three. Number three, really? Yeah. Might be the best season they've ever done. I th- in my opinion, I know a lot of the people that read the books didn't love this season. They thought mm-hmm. it was a little too popcorny for the audience. But I loved this season. I thought the season finale of Game of Thrones was so it set up it sets up the next two seasons so so well we're finally going to get mm-hmm. that battle almost like it feels like a battle of the bastards every episode and that battle of the bastards episode is it's braveheart on telly on tv yeah and i said on telly this is braveheart on, on telly. telly uh it's braveheart on television uh, the battle was incredible just that whole episode will live in infamy as one of the yeah. greatest episodes of tv ever so game of thrones just keep doing what you're doing okay number two we're staying on the other side of the pond, I guess. I mean, Game of Thrones is HBO, but <laughs> they shoot it all over there. They do, yeah. uh, we're going to go Peaky Blinders. Everybody knows that this show, I talk about the show all the time. I wear the hat all the time. Uh, I, I'm trying to line up a suit of Peaky Blinders for next season premiere. This show, just so criminally underrated. Killian Murphy, the, the entire cast, they're gypsies like we talked about. I just love this show. You need to watch Peaky Blinders. I know, I know. And David and I both. We did a season three review. We did. We did a series review. See it up here in Collider. Mm -hmm. David, I just, I can't get enough of Peaky Blinders. It's good. I mean, I I love the music too. Yeah. They use like modern music, which I don't always like in period pieces, but Mm -hmm. I think it works in this show. This show has an attitude about it. It really does. An attitude about it. Uh, I just love it. Tom Hardy in it too. Yeah. I love Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Yeah, just, it keeps knocking it out of the park and we're going to get two more seasons. Yeah. And then it's going to be done. So if you want to catch up on Peaky Blinders now, it's only six episodes a season on Netflix or BBC, depending on where you you live finally my number one drama of the year i know is kind of going to be a shocker to some people but it's it's people versus oj right. i loved this they like you were talking about with new girl when you see it on your dvr you get that excited feeling in your stomach you just want to wa- watch it right away i've always been so interested about this trial the acting was incredible the writing was great marsha 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 again one of those episodes of the year where you just i can't go to a grocery store now and look at those tabloids without thinking of that episode. Yeah. Because just the pain on her face, Sarah Paulson deserves all the awards, and Sterling K. Brown, you know, talk about launching your career yeah. in one year. The guy is just crushing it. So, People vs. OJ, my number one drama, obviously in the in the uh, the honorable mentions there, Stranger Things, I loved. Better Call Saul, obviously. Halt and Catch Fire, one of those shows that nobody's watching that you should. And Rectify and Orphan Black were some mm-hmm. of my honorable mentions. But those are my top threes. Are we going to Sasha? Yes, we are. We are going to Sasha. Okay, Sinead, why don't you take uh, Sasha's comedies? Sure. All right, so in number three, uh, she has Last Week Tonight. Yeah. A show that you, that really during the election process was probably my favorite political show Mm -hmm. to watch by far. And a show that really on paper shouldn't work because it's just one man talking about maybe three total subjects of the whole show. Sometimes one, yeah, once a week. As opposed to a lot of the daily shows, Yeah. yeah. 
And sometimes only one subject or maybe even two mm -hmm. really shouldn't work. And John, Ol the reason why this works is John Oliver. Right, he's, he's incredible. He's absolutely one of the more talented people we have working in the business today. Mm -hmm. Just incredible. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see a really funny speech, watch his speech after he wins the Emmy. He just absolutely trashes these three people in the media, and they all like one. I think one was from France, one was from Australia, and one from the States. And because they're like, so do you feel responsible for Donald Trump? And he's like, I, it feels great to win the award. Uh, thank you so much for voting. Like he he just won't even acknowledge <laughs> me. He just totally trashes them. So congratulations, John Oliver, you're killing it. Very cool. All right, her number two spot is literally no surprise. She talks about it all the time. Yep. It's girls. No, I know, Josh, you're not a fan of girls. I am not. But let me say something positive. I stuck with it for a few seasons. And I appreciate the fact that HBO gave Lena Dunham so much freedom to tell her story. HBO didn't give Lena Dunham any control. Judd Apatow told well, okay, HBO right. to give Lena Dunham What I'm control. saying is I'm glad there's a show out there like this. Mm -hmm. It's experimental. You don't always know what you're going to get on a week-to-week -week basis. There are some excellent episodes mixed in around some okay episodes on that series. So I want to give it credit. I think I'm, I'm happy that Lena Dunham was able to do the show that she did. Listen, I With give an it, all-female cast. No, I give it all the credit in the world. Those girls are fantastic actors. People love this show. It is what it is. And just, we got Adam Driver out of it. And Adam Driver Adam is Driver. A, so, it's so just, good. For me, I just... It wasn't that funny. Like, yeah. if I'm mm -hmm. being 100% honest. Like, I know that... My best friend loves this show. Mm -hmm. I just, I wasn't ever moved by it in mm. any sort of way. She wasn't moved. And if you're not moving Sinead, she's not watching That's it. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And Sasha's number one comedy. Oh, it's Atlanta. <laughs> of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. I, we all are so all high on the Atlanta train. I think we're just so excited. We were so excited to have gotten a show. Yeah. A brand new show to kind of like freshen up all of our repertoire, yeah. and it was just unbelievable. Yeah. See, one thing that's great about television, which I love, is unlike, you know, we're talking about films right now, all these Oscar worthy films are coming out. They all come out at the end of the year, right for award season. With television, we get it all year round. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's great. You, you get, uh, there's, there's no off season. One of your shows ends, another one picks right back. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the it's the gift that keeps on giving yeah. the whole year, Clark. The whole year. Same. <laughs> yeah. All right, David. Uh, good one. Good one. David, uh, why don't you break down her top three dramas? Okay, so we're going with Sasha here. Yeah. Sasha Pearl River. Uh, miss number three. Talking. Yeah, we miss Sasha. She is picking Westworld. Whoa. She is the Westworld queen for theories. Totally. She was just, I mean, it hurt my head. The theories hurt my head. Well, but she, was, she, she was predicted brilliant. the entire finale. Yeah. Yeah. Let's she, not she, forget that. Sasha wrote the finale. I yeah. think it's Sasha a, wrote all of Westworld and didn't It is tell a us. scandal they did not give her a writing credit or special thanks in that last episode. It should have, instead of the, the final episode being called, what, the bicameral man or something? Was yeah. That the finale? It should just, the bicameral mind. It should have just called Sasha Pearl Raver's brain. Yeah. So let's talk about Westworld in the, in the, just in terms of our show here. Mm -hmm. The most divisive show yeah. amongst 100%. us. That we've ever talked about totally. because it's not like Walking Dead where, you know, as much as Josh likes, I know you like The Walking Dead a lot, but you wouldn't, you're not like deep into arguing about how good it is. Like, David, you need to be watching mm -hmm. the show. Whereas Westworld, we were arguing to you that you should watch this and you, you kept trying and trying and trying. You gave it a shot, which I commend you for, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I commend you. So I watched every episode. You watched every episode and you liked some of it. Yeah. There's a lot of it you didn't like, though. And mm -hmm. it was great every week hearing right. us just kind of debate the episode. Sasha with her theories, Josh with his, you know, kind of back and forth. And there were a couple yeah. times that David and I agreed with you on some of those yeah. points. I remember there was like one episode in there where you had made really good points. And mm -hmm. it was like a, it was the type of show that there was so much going on mm -hmm. that you could be really stoked on some parts of the episode and then really confused or really yeah. think like. And it was really predictable, too. And even though I love the show, I still stand by the fact that it was pretty predictable. But I loved, I loved how invested we were, even though we were on different sides of it. And I, I, I honestly, I didn't love the show, but I right. loved talking about it with you guys. I really did. And I think uh, a lot of the commenters on YouTube uh, are, it's again, it's polarizing. You either love it or you don't. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, I appreciate all you guys, even the haters. Uh, it was so much fun to listen to you guys talk about this show. And I thought it was super well done. Beautifully shot. Even Rachel Wood was fantastic. She was a highlight for me. But I can't wait to see if this is going to be like the case of leftover season one. Mm. And then when season two comes, if you're going to be like back on board. Yeah. Maybe you won't. Maybe you feel the exact Maybe. same way. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay, what's two? We're going number two. We're going People versus OJ. Yeah. Yeah. We I talked can't about argue it. with that. Yeah. yeah this, Sasha loves that one too. Yeah. A top three list is hard to do. No, yeah. There's yeah. so many good shows. I'm glad we all kind of picked some different ones. So. Top, I, here's the thing. If we'd done top five, this would have been an hour show. Yeah. And we would have been yelling at each other a lot. Yeah. But I think top three is really... Uh, I mean, it's my favorite way to do it because it really, you, you, cream of the crop. Yeah. You know, butter, butter up there. And speaking um, of cream of the crop, going to number one on Sasha's list is Game of Thrones. 
which is a cream of the crop. I think maybe their best season they've ever done. It was hard not to put this on my top three, but there's just some other shows that just stuck with me more. Yeah. Um, but, man, I cannot wait for the final two seasons of Game of Thrones. It's a shame we have to wait long, a little know. longer this time, but, man, it was so good. Yeah, Number one the, on Sasha's list. Everybody always, you know, obviously Game of Thrones gets nominated for everything. Everybody watches it. You know, they're, the people that don't watch it are basically shunned in most social circles. Mm -hmm. So if you're not watching Game of Thrones and you hear things from people like you won't like it or it's too slow or you tried to watch it, Give it another chance because it is revolutionary TV. It is part of the social, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it? The social zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. So watch it. Love it. Enjoy it. Even if you read the books and you don't like what they've done with the TV show, you have to appreciate the effort that has gone into that show. Great list, Sasha Poe Raver. Yeah. We miss you. Thank you. Those were, uh, I, I could see a couple of your picks coming from a mile away because you're so passionate about it. I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And let's wrap this up with the 10, the perfect 10 that she is. <laughs> Sinead DeFries, let's start with your top three comedies in okay. three spot. All right, so in my number three spot is Modern Family. Yes. Um, so for me, I watch a lot more comedies than I do dramas yep. um, because I'm the type of person that is extremely busy. I have a child, and I can't always pay attention to the TV. Mm -hmm. So during the week, most of the things I'm watching are these things that really make me laugh and bring my stress levels down and are very rewatchable. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of how I feel about all, all of my three shows. Modern Family to me is hysterical. I, it's, it's that type of humor that I don't feel like everybody resonates with, but there is something about watching natural chemistry between groups of people yeah. is I gravitate towards it. You know what's crazy about Modern Family is one, I've never missed a show, right? Yeah. That's one of, again, a, a, the, uh, the DVR present, as, as we like to kind of call it, is when it's on my DVR, I'm so excited. It has at least three to four laugh out loud moments an episode. Yep. And if you watch the pilot of Modern Family until right now, that chemistry has never changed. Never, ever changed. Those er characters, those actors, even the kids have incredible chemistry all together, and that's what makes the show. Yep. And really even, does. even the, I feel like the, the, the two youngest boys on the show changed the most, right? They were obviously grew up. They were mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And Luke and Manny are the, are the two little kids. They became like teenagers, like obviously went through puberty. Yeah. Like you think that can you, like usually change the way you act and deliver. But those kids on that show, they're incredible. Like Manny, the kid that played Manny could have gotten annoying. Annoying, easily. No. No. Nope. He's great. Yeah. Just really yeah. well done. Modern Family, keep doing it. Yeah. All right, what's next? My number two spot goes to Atlanta, obviously. Atlanta, um, the only show so far to make everybody's, everybody's list. list. Mm -hmm. Yep. Obviously, we know why. It's the best. Um, yeah. <laughs> but not as good for me as New Girl. Yeah. Uh, New Girl is just, like we said, it's just the best. I love I wanna, these You people. know what I want to do sometime? I'd love for us to play that game they play with, like the beer can and just make up our own rules. Oh, hell yeah. Know. When they're jumping on the tables yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's lava, the best. it's lava. And then they're like, get under the cage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're just the best. Like, again, my heart gravitates towards groups of people. Same thing with the reason why I love friends so much. I love just seeing a huge um, um, breakup of like chemistry and relationships mm -hmm. and friendships and how it all works together because I feel like it's so relatable and so real. And that's what I love. 100%. Um, all right, my dramas. Breaking and my number down. three spot goes to the show that I finally watched, uh, Stranger Things. Yeah. And I think the reason why I, I picked all of these three were because they really shocked me in terms of my interests, mm. right? I, like I said, I'm not one for crazy dramas. Might be the dramas. breakaway hit of the year. Yeah, for sure. Stranger Things, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not crazy for dramas, but uh, these shows hooked me and I couldn't stop watching. Stranger Things scared the living hell out of me. Really? Couldn't watch it alone, you guys. I am... Didn't realize how terrified I am as a human being. Like, I'm really scared of a lot of things. Did not realize, but I love a show that makes me, like, look around. That is Stranger mm -hmm. Things. Um, it's just incredible. I think yeah. it's really, really great acting. And again, children who, I don't know how the hell they got the skills that they did, like, divine intervention, but yeah. just awesome acting all throughout and a great story. Mm. Um, my number two is The Path. Um, the Path, to me... It was the only one that you and I... I think, did you watch every episode? I, I liked The Path. Oh, okay. I okay. It. Yeah. The yeah. Path, yeah. to me, was so incredibly riveting and so interesting. And I have a thing about cults. Like, I mm. love the so, like, idea of it. My thing with organized crime is your yes, thing with cults. with yeah. cults. Um, you know, and I just love the, the parallels to, to Scientology and just, like, I love learning about this because this is a very real thing that happens every relevant. single day, super relevant, yep. but 
the path to me was so incredible because of Hugh Dancy. I love Aaron Paul. I love Michelle Monaghan. But Hugh Dancy, someone I was not that familiar with, um, was unbelievable. Like scary, yet manipulative, and just so well loved. And like charming. a natural, yeah, like a cult leader. Yeah. And it was just so interesting to see how much he nailed that that leader role where people respect him and want to literally like have sex with him to to the next episode seeing how truly evil and manipulative he mm -hmm. was. It was like the craziest mind F in the world yeah. to keep up with his character. And you see that uh, w one thing you get from him is, and, and like your fascination with cults is the weaker minded people yep. and, the, and the vulnerable and the people and how they suck them in were so fooled by his yeah. snake like yeah. charm. Whereas the elders were, you know, yeah. they finally saw what he was. Yeah. And yeah. like in real, when, when you hear about this in real world, you're always like, how do they even give into that? I would never, I'd be like, bye. Yeah. But in this show, he played it so well. You could almost see how somebody could be kind of blinded yeah. when talking to him yeah. um, and then my number one is Westworld you guys <laughs> uh, just the best I love it so much it's so good um, but uh, yeah all sci-fi horror type shows it just really shocked me that mm, yeah. these are the shows that resonated the most with me but man I love theories and I love kind of like thinking ahead and all of my all of my dramas are like that I want to say it was nice to see Tandy Newton actually won the Critics' Choice yeah. Awards for Best Supporting Actress very that was good cool. for her yeah. very very cool yeah. I think uh First, your list is great, and and all of our lists were pretty different in in one respect. Obviously, Atlanta being the one common thread we had throughout. But you know, you and I sharing New Girl, and everybody's you can see everybody's taste. Oh but yeah, similar but different. Well, that's why I've heard people, and I see people in the com not heard. I see people in the comments section sometimes saying like, "Oh, these guys they all watch the same shows." I I I couldn't disagree more. Like we all I, watch the same shows. Yeah. Oh heck no. I don't watch mm -hmm. New Girl. No. I don't watch Modern Family. I don't watch. I don't watch SNL. Yeah. I don't watch John Oliver. There's a lot of shows that I don't watch. I watch way more British stuff than you guys do. Mm -hmm. You guys watch. I don't watch I, like literally most of the shows that you watch. I don't watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we have a. I I, I always praise that we have a very diverse. Yeah. Now yeah. our top list. There's some similarities there. Sure. But overall, I think we have a very diverse list. Yeah. And uh, good taste. I think that's what really makes the TV Talk crew get along so well and the show work so well is that our tastes are different mm -hmm. and thank you but, for allowing us the time to praise ourselves for yeah. a second yeah. i mean but we love you guys and thank yeah. you so much for watching exactly in the comment section below give us your top three comedies your top three dramas i can't wait to see what you say argue it with you because uh that's what we love to do yeah so thank you for watching the year-end review here of 2016 next week you will get the first ever the first annual of the first ever <laughs> uh, of what will become an annual thing here on Clatter TV Talk, the Golden Remotes. Aww. Seven different categories, awards awarded out to our finest and favorite. And obviously, the final award, the Bronze Book, which is the worst new show of 2016. So tune in for that. We loved picking it. We loved voting. We also included Allison Keen from Clatter.com and Roxy Stryer as well, a, a guest co-host and our guest co-host on the Emmy special. So check out. Uh, the Golden Remote's out next week. Before we go here, let's go around the table. Sinead, where can the good people find you? I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at that's Sinead.com here on Mondays hosting TV Talk, on Fridays hosting Movie Talk, and hosting Mailbag over the weekend. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy New Year. Yeah. David W.H. Griffin. Uh, you can find me at Griffin DE, uh, Instagram and Twitter, as well as doing Clark TV Talk on Mondays, Star Wars Rebels on Saturdays when that comes back. Also, too, it's a shame Sasha's in here, so I can't say this for, uh, with her present, but we've been doing the show. I I don't know the exact date, maybe six months or so. It's yeah. been it's been for a while, at least June, right? At least I think we started Game in Game of Thrones uh, was still going on. I believe we started in May, I yeah, want to say. So March or May. Yeah. So over a little over March six April. months now, and it's just been incredible working with you, Josh, and you, Sinead, and of course Sasha. Uh, it's not really to come here every week and just work with really talented people, discuss things that we'd like to talk about on a weekly basis. Uh, it just feels like living life and it's a lot of fun. And I want to thank you, the fans, for of course watching our show, as Josh has already said before, but I just wanted to reiterate that because it's been a blast these last six months. It really has. Uh, I think we've formed an amazing bond and we do miss Sash Pearl Raver. Yep. She made a great list, and unfortunately, she is not here for the show, but she will be back in 2017, and so will we. But before that, uh, I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram, The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube here every Monday doing Clatter TV talk. You guys can see me all over Clatter doing all kinds of other stuff. Happy holidays. Hug someone, love someone, drink some eggnog, and don't say anything bad at the dinner table that will get you in trouble for 2017. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.